Hey guys, and welcome to today's project of making chocolate souffle. This light and airy dessert is a must-make treat that will really impress your friends and family on any occasion, most especially during Valentine's Day and birthdays. The best advice I can give you is don't be afraid of making souffle. I will be honest with you guys, I didn't succeed in making this on my first attempt, and if you happen to fail, don't worry, or it doesn't turn out right, hey, at least you still can enjoy the outcome. It took me several attempts to make it like this. And once you understand each step of the process, your souffle making skills can only get better and better. Let's start with one of the most important parts, the ramekin preparation. I will be using ramekins from Le Creuset. You don't have to use it from them. I would also advise in getting a straight edge ramekin and not one with a lip. This will ensure a clean and proper rise from the souffle. Next, you will need a brush. You can use a silicone brush, but I find the bristles rather big and not well spaced. So I prefer one that is tightly packed and has smaller bristles to create better brush strokes. Take some soft room temperature spreadable butter and really get your brush in there. The idea is to take a load and we are going to brush it off in the ramekin. We want the souffle to rise in the upwards direction so brush the butter in that direction. Try and have an even pressure while you rotate the ramekins and keep the same upwards direction. Brush the bottom part as well. Once you have that done, it should look something like this. Do all of your ramekins like this. I have four, so I did all of them. Place them in the fridge to cool and set. Set a timer for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, we're going to do a second coat. This is to give it finer lines and double reinforce the souffle to rise up properly. Next, take a bowl with some sugar, place a couple of spoonfuls of sugar in the ramekins, slowly dump out the sugar while spinning the ramekins. Make sure everything gets coated. Once you have emptied all the sugar, give it a tap. This is just in case there are any lumps of sugar trapped at the bottom. There you go, nicely coated. Do it all to your ramekins. Place it back in the fridge for now. Now we can go ahead and start making the base. Take a medium sized pot and pour in 300 grams of full fat milk, 20 grams of corn flour. Give that a whisk. Take the pot over to the stove and turn the heat on to medium to high. We want the milk to boil for at least two minutes to cook out the cornstarch. After the two minutes, take it to one side to cool slightly. Now, let's talk about the chocolate. We're gonna use dark chocolate from Calabao, which is finest Belgian chocolate at 70% with its nice roasted notes and fruity hints. Take 300 grams and place that in a microwave safe bowl we're going to microwave the chocolate for 30 seconds. This will just help in softening and slightly melt the chocolate. Next, take a large bowl and place the chocolate in. Take the warm milk mixture and pour that over the chocolate. You are basically creating a thick chocolate emulsion. Whisk that until it becomes smooth. Leave that to one side to cool down slightly. We are going to make the meringue now. Next, measure out 80 grams of sugar. Then take another large bowl, pour in 200 grams of egg whites. It would be better if the egg whites are from room temperature. Start whisking. This is the crucial part and why I prefer to make it by hand rather than a machine, even though a machine will be easier and faster. I do it by hand to feel the consistency of the meringue as I'm whisking it up and it also adds a personal sense of gratification that I made all of this by hand, but it is mostly for the feel of the meringue. It is all about knowing when to stop whisking. Once you get some nice bubbles or foam forming, pour in half of the sugar. We don't want to pour in all the sugar at once that might collapse the meringue. Once you feel that the sugar has been dispersed evenly, pour in the rest of the sugar. Start whisking again. Whisk it loosely until you reach a nice airy consistency. We are looking for a consistency that will support itself when you fold it onto itself. Now we can go ahead and mix everything together. Take the chocolate mixture 
and give that a mix to loosen it and to break up any lumps. Pour in one third of the meringue and incorporate the two together. You can be slightly rough at this stage. Once it has come together, measure out 60 grams of egg yolks. Pour in the egg yolks. Give that a couple of turns of the whisk. Now is where we have to be gentle. You can fold with a whisk. Watch how I fold with the whisk, taking some mixture from the bottom and folding it to the top and at the same time turning my bowl. This will prevent you from just mixing in one spot. Now you can add the final part of the meringue to the mixture. Give it some light turns and you should be done. If you want to check on how your mixture is doing, just drop some of the mixture on itself. It should hold up for about two to three seconds before it disappears. Now take the ramekins from the fridge and take a ladle. What you will need to do is overfill your ramekins. Yes, overfill your ramekins. Give it a small tap just to bring up any loose bubbles. Just like this one that just escaped. We are basically making the mixture compact. Take a palette knife and scrape off any extra mixture back into the bowl. Take your thumb and clean the edge. If you don't do that, the sides could burn while cooking. Now comes the other thumb trick. Run your thumb slightly inwards and spin the ramekin around while you do that. Notice how there's a small gap between the mixture and the edge. What this does is it ensures that it doesn't get caught, preventing it from rising. Place it in your oven, set at 190 degrees Celsius for 13 minutes. I found 13 minutes to be perfect for my oven and my ramekin size. Well, you have three more other ramekins to find your perfect timing, give or take a couple of minutes here and there. Watch that rise. Well, how about that? I am not so bothered by the slight angle there. My oven has a back fan and will cook one corner a little better than the other corner. I also don't want to open the door to turn the souffle while mid-cooking. At this point, just wait about two minutes for things to settle. You can go ahead and dig in. A great souffle has to be slightly runny in the middle, but just the right amount. You still want that moist bite while enjoying this. Let's have a bite. Because it is still hot, the remaining heat will cook the middle. Oh my goodness. Just delightful. And such a pleasant mouthfeel. Very rich, and you deserve this. You thought I would stop at one spoon. I'm going back for a second spoon. You can also dust the tops with some icing sugar, or if you want some more chocolate, some cocoa powder. Have it with some ice cream or vanilla custard, but equally just as good on its own. And there you have it, chocolate souffle. As usual, it was a pleasure having you with us on this journey today. If you enjoyed what you watched, please leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe to be notified of upcoming videos, and we shall see you in the next one. Bye for now.